Hey YouTube, Red Ops 105 here bringing you video. And just if you didn't know, the Sorka fan is back in Duel Links. So meaning if you missed out on getting Sork, you can get them. And also for my vets that already got Sork from the last time he's around, there are also some new cards you can get from that. And also in this video, I'll be showing off a new deck I'm working on. It still needs polishing, nothing special really. But Anyway, let's hop into Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links and check that out. Okay, like I was saying for my new people in Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, Sark, the character that I am actually have right now, is available to unlock in the event. Basically, to unlock him, you have to actually earn points in the event by simply beating him, well, either beating him or beating the ghouls, which will be these two icons right here that have the event around them. So if you beat any of them, you will actually earn points to unlock, unlock Sark. And basically when he will become available, you will have to complete challenge one and challenge two. And then tonight, at least from my time zone at 11, you can go ahead and beat Sark and unlock him. And now for my vets, that's like, I already got Sark. I don't really need to do this event. There's a few things for you to actually farm in this event to actually have a little bit of an incentive to do it. So if you already have Shark and you don't really care for the event, the only things that you have to farm for in this event will actually be right here, a new skill, which is you have to complete challenge four after the eighth. And you will get the skill for full Black Raid Lancer, which in a previous video I thought was going to be a card that you could actually earn in the return of this event. But that's not the case. You will actually get the full armor Black Raid Lancer through this skill. And basically the skill says you can place one full armor Black Raid Lancer from your outside of your deck on top of one Black Raid Lancer or submersible carrier arrow shark. If you control, this is treated as an XC summon. So yeah, this will basically let you get full armor Black Red Lancer that way. Even if you don't have Black Red Lancer from Sharks Level Up Rewards, which will I have my other video for that in the description below for if you don't know what Sharks skills are. Because I already made an entire video dedicated to that. But we also got a new mat and sleeves here with Shark and with number 32 Shark Drake and Shark. And then also the last two things you can earn in this event is number 47, Nightmare Shark, which is a level, well, rank three level, which requires two level three monsters to go into. When this card is special summon, you can attach one level three monster from your hand or your side of the field to this card that has an XC material. Once per turn, you can detach one material from this card then target one water monster you control. This turn, that monster can attack your opponent directly. Also, other monsters cannot attack. So yeah, this is a pretty alright card. It can deal some damage by just bypassing your opponent. So he can help you do that last final push you need to get the W. Then the last card that I'm definitely gonna gonna be saying right in my ears, but I know it's gonna sound like I'm mispronouncing it. Uh Death Sark, because I know I can't pronounce that P in it. But Death Sark, I'm trying to pronounce it. I know I'm failing. But anyway. If you control no monsters, you can normal summon this card without tribune. Once returned during your opponent's standby phase, this card attack becomes double. It's current attack until the end of this turn. Okay, so basically when you pass play this, pass it to your opponent's turn, this monster attack must become 2,400. But it's just you wasting your normal summon to get this out. So that's why I kind of like I don't really care for this card. But hey, it's something else to farm for in the event if you basically have nothing else to do. Okay, and now that I went with the Sark event, there's only just one last, but well, two public service announcements. Um, this event right here that ends on January 10th, the Missing Circuit, you can also earn the Flying Elephant Monster, which one of my fellow YouTubers actually made a video over the flying elephant it's also having a video over the card as well i'm still trying to earn my copy of it so i can make my little troll deck for the flying elephant but if you don't know what this monster does is if you deal direct if this card attacks directly dealing damage to your opponent that is game so i want to make a trolling deck with this card but anyway besides that 
in the rank doors, once you get to get 25 wins, you can actually earn Artfiend Ascension, which is basically an Xyz for Summon Skull. As you know, we already got the Synchro for Summon Skull, and because they both treat it as Summon Skull, they can actually recycle each other. But this card name is always, well, becomes Summon Skull on the field, but it's still treated as an Archfiend card if Summon Skull. If some skull you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can detach one material from this card instead. If this XC7 card you control is sent for, to your graveyard by an opponent's card, you can spell some one summon skull from your hand, deck, or graveyard. So, yeah, this is a very powerful card. It's basically the same as the synchro, but just because I re just reread his effect, what I was saying earlier about you being able to use the other the synchro summon skull to bring this one back and back and forth it doesn't work that way because he's only treated as summon skull while on the field but wait a minute oh monster reborn reborn okay at four minutes i thought they said we could earn monster reborn but anyway yeah that's all of the news updates for Yu-Gi-Oh! duel links but now I'm going to hop over to the deck I've been working on and show y'all what i kind of been in the lab with lately since I sold the Thunder and Chaos deck last. Okay, as you see, and right now in Yu-Gi-Oh! GX World, I have Jaden Ubel equipped with the skill Ultimate Fusion. And right now I'm rocking a fun little deck that I'm calling Red Eyes Heroes. Yes, it is a Red Eyes deck. And... Basically, this has been a fun little deck to experiment on. I practiced with it against my friends a few times. Won a few PvP matches with it. I just need to add another hero fusion in here. But basically, the whole concept of the deck is to either have your wink distance be Brave Neos or Archfiend of Lightning. And then occasionally, I had Red Eye Slash come in and do some work. But those are your main win conditions in the deck. The only um, issues I have seen so far is occasionally oh, Oversoul being a dead card and the skill Ultimate Fusion because it's a good skill. Don't get me wrong. I actually beat my friend because of the skill. But because I didn't have a material or a fusion material to match what I was needed to summon the other monster. Basically, I used the skill and this card was dead in my hand. So, yeah, it's, that's basically the issues with the deck so far. Uh, if there was anything I would say you could drop, I would say you can drop the Claw of Hermos and the Red Eyes Black Dragon Sword. Basically, these are just in the deck to help get over those monsters that are stronger than both Neos, Red Eyes, and the Hero Fusions that we do have in the deck can't get over. That's basically all the Red Eyes Black Dragon, the Claw of Hermos is in there for. You can replace it with anything. Uh, Return of Red Eyes is also an optional card. It's basically just in there to special summon or Red Eyes Archfiend of Lightning or, or Red Eyes Black Dragon in case things go wrong. Now, outside of that, this is the deck. But I'm just going to do like a few more games. I'm just also going to add a Hero of Fusion in real quick. Because I think I only have an extra slot in this because I took out an extra copy of the Red Eyes Black Dragon Sword. So let's see. Okay, it seems I don't have the Hero Fusion I was thinking of yet in Duel Links, but. Basically, what I was going to add into the deck is um, Elemental Hero Gaia, since we could also use that card to fusion off of Super Polymerization if things really went wrong. But let me see. I guess for now, since our opponent does really use, like, you know, you know what I'm trying to say is Noble Knights, we could run Elemental Hero Neo's Knight. So that way we could actually use our Neos and Super Polymerization if we're going against, say, Noble Knights and have another way to fuse it out of whatever problematic card is on the field because it won't tribute the new 
Well, it won't activate the new Noble Knight monster's effect. But anyway, let's save this and hop into some PvP duels real quick. Alright guys, we are in a match now. We are going against an opponent, uh, Design97, okay? So let's see who he's playing. Ah, Dark Side Dimension tell you. Okay, let's wonder what decks he's playing. Okay, skill holy guard. This hand is a brick in my opinion right now. But we're gonna set the fiendish chain and throw Avion in defense mode. Okay. Yeah, I thought that. Ah, light swarm. Okay, we so we are going against rich crafters. So I'm guessing what the play will be here is to actually go ahead and fuse or something. I'm just going to go ahead and fuse these two. The Grand Tornado's effect activate his monster's attack points is half. And let's go ahead and go in for some damage. And pass the turn. Like, honestly, it depends what we draw here because right now we're in a situation where we could be screwed. Like, yeah, we're not attacking into that. That's also an option. So this is like a Rich Crafter, Magician Girl, Light Swan hybrid. Huh. I guess they got the spell card to bring Madame back, I'm guessing. Oof, that's another bad mail for them. We don't want to lose the Claw of Hermos. We don't have Raz Black Dragon in the graveyard, so we're just going to... Well, we could troll and make it where it doesn't matter what he does. So let's go ahead and do that. Get rid of the Dragon Keeper magic. Because, yeah, our monster attack points will get halved. But it won't be nearly as bad as it would have been. Yeah, yeah. My monster attack points is half. And then the monster you spell so something become my new target. I played Magistral Girls in real life. So I know the whole strategy. Now that's an issue though. Ah. She's light. So we don't have a target right now for her. Still more milling. Like the one I can think he could have is Judgment Dragon at the moment. Because even with this monster tap points half, I think we're still in a good position. Yeah, she can get over it because of Madame's effect. Or that too. That also works. Okay, 
because of the charge. Well, not the charge, but, you know. Oh, boy. Now we're in a bad position. No, I don't want to battle. And like right now we're in a situation where even if we do take enough damage, we don't want to activate the skill. But granted, it's game because he can use my damage effect and deal the piercing dam or deal the damage needed to win. So GG. Huh, surprised he didn't use my damage effect. Because he had plenty of spells to use my damn's effect. This is bad. I end my turn. Oh, he has to be battling a monster for that. Now, I would if I could. Okay, yeah, I'm going to set that and pass. Ah, uh, by booster. Oh no, that lets him attack again. Well, anyway, that was a good game. Let's go ahead and go to game two. Okay, okay, we got into a second game, and it looks like we are going against undead. But anyway, as you can see in that last match, sometimes I do have an issue of putting all my eggs in one basket. And I've seen sometimes the jars can be a dead one. So in some cases, maybe a skill like balance would be better for this deck. And I was even considering of uh, going to like the basic, well, the basic Jaden, because he has some skills that would make this deck become more consistent. And as you can tell, I'm not running Red Eyes Fusion in the deck because it basically breaks the deck but anyway this turn instead of wrestling into a fusion play we are going to set red eyes baby in defense mode hope he attacks it and pass the turn okay he kind of just doing the same thing Ah, so he just jumped into the fusion place. Oof, okay, this deck could be an issue for us. But it, he did do what we wanted. So if he summons this in defense mode and then attack into our red eyes baby, we kind of got the rest of the combo that we needed. Okay, Red Eyes Baby's effect activates. So in this case, we're going to special summon on Red Eyes Archfiend of Lightning. And then equip the Red Eyes Baby to him. Okay, we're going to set this. We're going to Gemini summon our Red Eyes Archfiend of Lightning and activate its effect. Okay, since it does appear he is trying to set up, we still gonna go ahead and go for him for an attack though. Cause I don't I didn't think he had anything face down. But what I was thinking that we could have done was set the Blackstone on Legend, but essentially already used our normal summon from Gemini summoning or or to find a lightning, that play was no longer in the book. But I'm following him, Destiny Jar. It doesn't matter for that. Basically, one of his win conditions here would to actually um, fuse the summon into Tiger, I believe. Yeah, like fuse Crimson Fox with another card in his hand and 
basically screw us over. Yeah, like right now, he could do that. And now because he used our infused material, our Archfiend Lightning goes to zero. Oh, that's gang. I did see that coming, though. Well, anyway, like I said, this deck is a deck in progress. Still working on it. As you can see, it does have some potential. Both games we came close to winning, but we just got outplayed. But anyway, I'll see y'all in the next video. I'm out. Peace. Nice.